Welcome back to Let's Play Disco Elysium. Last episode, the sun set, and we spoke to the Wild Pines representative, Joyce. We spoke to her on a pier, but um, we had some kind of bad, bad rolls, some bad dice rolls. Hello again, sweetie. Oh, sweetie, I heard your conversation. Try to force a tear out of your duct. Really rip into the whole emotional aggression thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, God. I'm going to die. Fucking shit. It's all over for me. Officer, get a hold of yourself, please. Sweetie, I'm sorry, but I think you need more help than I can give you. So, here we are, back at the roundabout, and um, it's nighttime. It's about 10 p.m. Uh, we try to get back into our whirling and rags uh, room, but Gart kicked us out. So, Kim had some very expensive uh, spinning tire cover whatever they took from some rich kid a while back and um, oh now we're going to try to sell them at a pawn shop welcome to Frit. what's that magazine she's reading hmm what magazine are you reading you mean this this is pop stars it's got like famous people in it it's not for sale Looks like it also has something called Police de la Mode, featured on page 34. This speaks to you. Hmm. I approve of this. Very futuristic. Tap on the girls kissing. She pops her raspberry flavored bubblegum and nods. Her shoulders tense. She shuffles back only slightly. Bewilderment Oops. and repulsion <laughs> root her in place. Oh, the Lebanese hate us. The lieutenant frowns at you before turning to the clerk with... You mean this? This is pop... Looks like it also has something... Forget about all that. Police de la mode. What is this fashion Future police feature? Um, it's where they rate different outfits famous people wear. It's kind of funny. They're kind of mean. It's about who's the most stylish. Hmm... So, who is the most stylish there? It can't be anyone from here. Benita. She's a model. Usually, it's a model. Or a singer-songwriter. Or a model. We are not the fashion police. We're the real police. Before we go on, what is this frit? I don't know. Frit? And what is frit? A 7 to 11 grocery store. Why is it written with three T's? I think they think that the extra T makes it funkier. It doesn't. The story goes that normal Fritta with two T's, a men's workwear shop in Vredefort, was already taken. So when Fritta Retail Inc. grew into a multinational corporation, they had to add an extra letter to avoid trademark infringement. Oh, business. Let's proceed. Yeah, oh, this da, da. Looks like it also uh, has something called Police de la Mode. I'm not even a... Yeah, the... okay. me neither. Let's proceed. I have some questions for you. Um, okay. I'm not really supposed to be chatting to anyone, but... Does Frit have a warehouse in the back of the Whirling and Rags? A warehouse? I don't know. Maybe. I don't really care what Frit does. This is important. She scrunches up her face into an expression of consummate adolescent skepticism. Fine. Frit doesn't have a warehouse. Just a little back room here. Okay? Can you tell me anything about the dead body? Um, I don't really know anything. I mean, I know it's there, but I haven't seen it, so... Did you know the man who died? Not really. Not really? Does it mean you knew him a little? Um, no. I didn't know him at all. How long has it been there? I don't know. Really long? What do you think happened? Um, 
I don't know. No need to worry. It's just standard procedure for us to ask around. If you hear anything, let us know, okay? Okay. Okay, thanks for your help. Uh-huh. Hey, this is not the right area to sell stuff. Where can I sell stuff? Um, Aminu, s'il vous plaît. I need to figure out where we need to go. Oh, trash can. Magnesium. All right. Quick save. Got to figure out what we need to do. Okay, I think I found it. In here. We haven't been here yet. Some kind of machine. An antique cash register. A bust of a woman. The plaque simply says, Day. In the dark, a film projector is whirring away. Most military wear, with a few more eccentric fashions thrown in. You see rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the trinkets displayed on the table. Some on horseback, others in rags. Others yet in bright blue uniforms. All are stern and unyielding in their duty. Step away from the table. Let's see if I can't uh, change into something more suggestive. on the shelf look well loved and well traveled chipped dented they stare at you with the unblinking eyes of their tape reels i stand on the tip of my toes to see more one especially catches your eye deep gold and amber plastic <coughs> with a big old handle on top a classic boom box that says stereo 8 approved just make sure it works before you buy it let's see Wow, a very large red t-shirt with an impressive print stands out from the other garb. Oh yeah? Oh yeah, the print depicts a muscled man striding toward you. A giant sword in each hand, encircled by burning embers. Behind him is a cluster of cabins engulfed in flames. Beneath him are the words, Hyeondal burning. That's a rad man from Hyeondal t-shirt you got there. Hell yeah, man. I don't usually carry printed tees, but this one was just pure exemplar. Oh, we have a lot in common. I'm a big fan of man from Hyamdal too. I wouldn't go so far as to say that I'm a fan, but I do think the Hyamdalaman saga is an integral part of our shared reality. Most people don't think that the man from Hyamdal really existed. But they're wrong. Let go of the t-shirt. A typical Martinez streetlight sits among assorted floor and table lamps. Where'd you get this? It was brought to me to be altered. We are not here to investigate the theft of city property. You have to admit it's rather clever what he's done with it. Hmm. Okay, mister. We're here to sell some hubcaps. It's not often that I see officers from the RCM in my pawn shop. What can I do for you? Hmm. Now that the RCM is here, tell me, have you had any trouble lately? I haven't had any problems myself, 
though some of my customers have complained about inconsistent law enforcement. Who are your customers, usually? All kinds of people come through here. Locals, travelers, people looking for a deal, people looking for a keepsake. People who are terminally bored. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. Hmm. Quite the, quite the collection. I may have something to add to it. It keeps me entertained. Entertained? He might be high. If he is, on what? There's something I'd like to sell. Yes, we'd like to sell these hubcaps. Roy takes the hubcaps from the lieutenant and inspects them. The spinners appear iridescent in the dancing light of his pawn shop. Yes, these are very, very good. Did you defraud some foreign prince for them? Jump a mesk banger? No matter. I'll give you 200 rael. No one was defrauded or jumped, I assure you. Of course. I meant no offense. 200 rael for you, officer. Delightful doing business with you. Do come again. Thank you. Here's the 130 real you need for your bill. Do not waste it. Hmm. He gives me 130 and he pockets the rest. The rest is for him. To compensate for the pain of being separated from his <laughs> radiant spinners. Anything else you're thinking of selling? Hmm. I have a fascinating photo of a corpse here. Oh, no. I don't like those kinds of objects. No sale. And do you know what the tattoos mean? A photic path, counter radiance network, anti magnetism. It's darkness. That's all I know. Sell me something lighter. You have absolutely no idea what a photic paths are, but the tattoos on the man are not that. I'll check my pockets. Anything else you're thinking of selling? Boogie Street, postcard. Upon it. And the rest are valuable. Clothes. I don't have anything to sell at the moment. Another time, perhaps. You might be able to aid our investigation. I doubt it, but I can try and answer any questions you may have. Know anything about the recent hanging? I do my best to keep my distance from all manner of butchery. Bad for business. Bad for everyone. He doesn't know anything. Ever had any dealings with Everard Clare? He's been by the shop a couple of times. There was something awfully deliberate about that laziness. And did he buy anything? He purchased a remarkably garish paperweight the first time he was here. Nothing the second. Did he discuss union business with you? He tried. Wanted to come to some mutually beneficial agreement around my dealings with the dock workers. I politely declined to hear him out. So you don't know what kind of arrangement he was talking about? As I said, I refused to talk to him. That's why he came back a second time. That's also why he hasn't come back a third. Why do I feel like you don't want to talk about him? Are you hiding something? They weren't the most pleasant interactions. Small town bigwigs always want everyone to play a part in the play they're staging. But I bowed out at some point. I prefer to watch from afar while the bigwigs come and go. I heard the forewoman before Everard disappeared. It was all very strange. That forewoman was more pleasant than Everard. But I guess it's all the same in the end. Well, I do have other questions. He nods reluctantly. No, that's all I've got. The pawnbroker's gaze is already fixed on the dancing colors. And by the way, do you happen to have any guns? Like the ones carried out by officers? Of the citizens' militia. Someone else came here earlier today asking the same question. 
I promptly sold her the gun you pawned a couple days back. This is a pawn shop, and it did feel as if you'd read before. Oh god. The lieutenant shifts from one foot to another. Alert. Wait, I sold you my gun? You... Uh... You were adamant about getting rid of it, officer. And I don't like keeping guns around the shop for long. Off the charts photon emissions. The unhealthy kind. Was a buyer a policeman too? She didn't seem like a policeman. Although she kept referring to herself as a pig. Which was odd. I found her interest in the gun a bit... Obsessive. But I was just happy to get rid of it. And of her. Truth be told, she was terrifying. Right, so let me get this right. You sold your sidearm issued by the citizen's militia, and now a civilian is running around the streets of Martinez with it? Hmm. Hmm. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry I sold my gun. <sighs> yeah, it's not good. I do hope we manage to clean this mess up somehow while also keeping our focus on the murder investigation. Any idea where I can find this buyer? My apologies, officer, but I have no idea where she was coming from or where she went. A needle in a haystack. There is nothing you can do about it now. You just have to hope you luck upon her somehow. At least I know now how I lost my sidearm. Let's talk about something else. Of course. Other business. Alright. Let's save here. It's time to leave. And I'll double check my journal. Smoker on the balcony. The gem mystery. Okay, to the whirling in rags. Why can't I run? One moment. Okay. Okay, guard, we have your money. Can I help you? Yes, have you got it? I have your money. Well. Here it is. Sorry about your trouble. The trouble. Great. Thank you, officer. That's all I wanted. Payment for services rendered. If you continue to stay here, I just ask that you please pay your nightly bill in advance starting tomorrow. The electronic lock to your room has been disabled till 9pm tomorrow. Please pay for each night in advance starting tomorrow. 20 real per night. I'll take a room here too. Of course. Always happy to have officers from the RCM as guests. Anything else I can do for you? Goodbye. Well then, uh, we have a new skill point. Uh, question is whether we put it into volition to try to get more money from Joyce, or put it into maybe endurance to increase our health. The door is closed. Okay, well, I think, hmm, check our journal, find money for rent and pay guard, you need to find 20 real to pay for your room at the Whirling or it will be locked after 9, as long as you don't have a free place to stay you have to do this every night, hmm, sorry cop 7, 3 communists, 2 fascists, 6 ultra liberal, okay,
This is the door to the room. You redecorate it. Okay, good night, Lieutenant. Just a moment. You had some questions earlier, I believe. And besides, we should discuss our progress on the investigation. Let's go out to the balcony. All right, let's go. <coughs> the air outside is brisk. The lieutenant is silent for a moment. He listens to the traffic hum. Then... Where shall we begin? We should talk about the investigation, first and foremost. But I also remember you wanting to discuss the RCM. I didn't know you smoke, Kim. I have a cigarette every night when I go over my notes. It's something of a ritual. Oh man, he looks so devastatingly cool with that cigarette. How'd you get so cool, Kim? You mean this? This isn't cool. It's an unnecessary trial of will. And unhealthy. Keeping the habit within the parameters he's given himself takes a lot of focus. It would be easy to simply quit. Yet, were he to quit, he would lose the cool factor. This man relishes his cool quite a bit, below to him. Right then. The debrief. Yes. It's been a long and eventful day. How do you think today went? Well, we inspected the victim's body, so that's good. It was not easily approachable in that state, but we did it. I would say our initial inspection was very thorough, and we have solid leads to follow up on. Then you shot the body down, which was quite a shot. I was inspired by your confidence in me, Kim. I admit I wasn't sure whether I should give you the gun, but I'm glad I did. Your shot enabled us to perform a field autopsy on the victim. We found some things we can really work with. I still feel like we missed something, but it's up to the boys in processing now. We did perform a thorough search of the crime scene. That's great. Now, as for interviews, my list of people to talk to here in Martinez, I mean. The initial interviews, yes, well, we talked to some people. Not always the right people, I'm afraid. We weren't able to find the union leader, Evra Claire, much less interview him. So that's on the to-do list for tomorrow. We tried to interview the wild band's rep, but she asked us to do something for her first. Fine, so be it. I have a feeling Joyce knows how dangerous the situation really is. We have to get her to talk to us. If Kim is emphasizing something this much, it really must be important. Above all, though, today was exhausting. What's with all the running? You run a lot. Is that a standard Prison 41 practice? I have a really good theory about why you're running so fast, son. Just you wait until we get up tomorrow. Ooh. Yeah, that's just how we roll. In Precinct 41. The Jamrock Shuffle. It's impressive, to say the least. For a man your age, especially. Those are some stylish shoes too, by the way. Those loafers. Must be hard to run into what you do. <laughs> so, what are your powers exactly? The RCM. They're quite limited, actually. The power officers of the Rebachol Citizens Militia exercise most frequently is imposing fines of up to 1,000 real for offenses in accordance with an interdepartmental schedule. Wouldn't that be an easy power to abuse? Yes, although indirectly, as citizens can always request records from their local station. Officers of the RCM have been known to take bribes of less than the prescribed fine amount. It undermines trust in the RCM. Okay, what else? We can arrest people, of course, but rather than bringing someone in directly, it's preferable to serve the station closely. It prevents confusion and overcrowding. And how can you be sure the arrestee will show up? You can't. Those who don't show up become fugitives, though, and have fewer legal rights when they are eventually caught. It's about power projection. Thus far, they seem to mostly show up. I see. And if someone resists? As you may have gathered from the fact that we are expected to carry a record of our kills, like the one in the watermarks, we are permitted to use whatever force is necessary. 
and strongly admonished not to abuse that power. What happens to the people we convict? We don't convict. We arrest and send them to coalition government courts in Couron and La Delta. The prosecution works off our testimonies and records, which is why it's paramount to keep them. And who makes all these rules? The coalition government? Yes, the international community's mission in Ravachol, and the moral intern, more broadly. The RCM was formed by the coalition government to restore order in the international zone after the revolution. So we did. Now we attempt to maintain that order. No more, no less. Or perhaps it is better to say we were allowed to form. It's a point of contention whether the citizens of Revachol or the coalition government formed the DRCM. Oh, well, let's say it was the citizens of Revachol. Be sentimental if you like. Either way, the Moralinton leases us the right to keep the peace in this city, and they will take it away if we misuse it. Or if they think you do. Moralinton, what is it? The Moralist International are the world's largest political organization. You know who they are. They have been running this place after the revolution failed. Well, if I didn't know, how would you describe them? They are a union of center-left and center-right parties across the real belt. Our coalition government is just one of its many projects. They also run the ICP, EPIS, most intergovernmental organizations in the world. What do you... what do they believe in? What do they believe in? They are Dolorians. They believe they continue the humanist project set forth by her innocence Dolores Day four centuries ago. Others say they are just technocrats. Dolorians. Those others say they continue the humanist project set forth by Dolores Day. And what is their symbol? Interesting question. It's a blue forget-me-not. Their motto is love, compassion, self-discipline. I think you can gauge what they want you to think of them from that. Something kind and usual. Something almost self-explanatory. Something even a little feminine. But in a strict manner. Something like the dark blue, serious color of the early night sky above. Who was Dolores Day? A historic figure? The author of the modern age? You will have to look elsewhere for opinions. The subject of humanism is too abstract for me. And what do you think of the moral intern? The moral intern are a fact. I try not to have opinions on facts until they change. And it doesn't look like that's about to happen. I have an opinion on the moral intern. Do you? Hmm. Hmm. We are stooges of the world's biggest bourgeois organization protecting bourgeois rights. Uh, but also... I'm falling asleep. On second thought, I don't have an opinion. Forget about it. My kind of police officer. Say nothing. Just look into the night. The dying lights of the city shimmer below. Slowly, like luminous clouds, they pass on his lenses. The lieutenant looks at his slim cigarette, contemplating the next drag. An aerostatic passes overhead the whiskers of its floodlights on the ground below. Kitsuragi's glasses light up as he looks to the sky. Two glowing circles. They really don't like us here. And the mouth on that kid, Kuno. It's different in land, in Jamrock, in the GRIH. Why are they like this? It's our fault for leaving this place to the dogs, to the union, to the company, not daring to come here more often. It's like I told you, this place is an orphan, fallen between the cracks. And then Jamrock, and the GRIH. We run this city. West of the river is RCM land. Mm. It's incredibly hard. 
human beings are. But we are in control, and it's worth it. The organization works, our systems work. If they didn't, the city would disintegrate. Well, I hope our investigation will help improve the situation here. At least do some good. Me too. But I wouldn't count on any drastic changes in our lifetimes. He is very tired, but the dark circles under his eyes make him look younger, not older. Well, thank you for this. Yeah, it's getting very cold now. Let's go. See you in the morning. Let's see. Oh, empty cassette case. What else can we find here? Let's try to pick up this bottle. Nope, that's not happening. stands broken in its frame cold wind blows in I look out you see some lights shimmering outside but it's difficult to make out the outlines of the buildings below dark phantoms with many tiny eyes chaotically arranged and not looking at you the fan is spinning pull on the fan the blades come squeaking to a halt White satin shirt, plus one conceptualization, minus one suggestion. Hmm. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. Okay, let's save. The fan stands still. The lights are on. The fan stands still. The lights are off again. The bed is cold and not particularly inviting, but it's yours. The sheets look awful. I crawl in. The sheets feel at once coarse and clammy against your skin. The bed sags beneath your weight as you stretch out and finally close your eyes. And then sleep doesn't come. And then, sleep doesn't come. But I want to sleep. Obviously, you're in bed with your eyes closed, but it's not happening. Why? Maybe it's the bed's fault. Check the pillow. Its synthetic filling has separated into hard lumps. The pillowcase smells oddly. It smells of alcohol and sweat and grease. I check the blanket. It barely covers your toes, stretching over your soft belly. This is your body here, intimate and warm, breathing. I roll over to the other side. It's a little better. Colors, scenes, and half-formed phrases still litter your mind. Part of you is still trying to solve the case, isn't it? Who killed him? Who? Something to do with, what was it that the lieutenant said? Union? And it's gone again. Your thoughts lost between the slowing brain waves. 
No more thoughts. Fall asleep now. Your breathing steadies. A great silence washes over you until your eyelids twitch in your sleep and images, images start forming. Oh, I'm outside. What's this? Do you remember the scent of your childhood? I remember nothing. Do you remember your wife's hand on your face? I was left. That's right, funky baby. And you just stood there. One hand on the bottle, and the other on your dick. Watching her go. Let it all be dragged away from you. Tell me, where are your friends? Human beings have friends, Harry boy. Where the hell are yours? Oh, this hits a little too close to home. I can get it all back. No, it's gone. Three times gone and never coming back. You failed. You failed me. You failed Elysium. I can come back from this. You're not coming back from shit. Thrashing around in that High conductivity state of yours, bumping into things and acting like a clown? Who are you kidding? I'm trying to solve... Trying to solve this case. You're trying to what? I can't hear you. This is just a word dream now. Jumbled up garbage. The pictures are gone. The bed rises to meet you. A thin, sleep-like state. More glass than velvet, grinding in your head. So something is wrong. Sleep shouldn't be this bad, this dry, this unnourishing. There's something wrong with your thoughts. Some kind of new type of hangover. Oh god, there's another type. Oh yes, party boy. And it's worse than the one before. <coughs> Just think of the shit you saw. Here it comes too. So soon already. A silent alarm goes off in your head. Like clockwork. Barely let you sleep at all. Time to get those clothes on, Harry. Time to go to work in the shit factory. <laughs> oh, I love me a good dream sequence. Good going, buddy. I just had the most beautiful dream. Uplifting. Rejuvenating. Really? Because you feel even worse this morning than you did last night. What the hell is going on with me? You mean, why are you so tired? Too tired and down to even think? It is worrying, isn't it? You can't be a detective like this. Detectives need to be able to think. Why is this happening? It's just that your heart has finally pumped all the speed out of your system, Buster. Time to get some more. Fuck you. You're too weak to say no now. Waking up is the worst part. Maybe somewhere down the line you could decline. No. I can take this. I'm not going to go looking for speed. Are you sure? 
ready to live as this pathetic shell of yourself for days. Basically, a week. Let's be honest, two weeks. Maybe three. You won't make it. Half the town will be dead by then. You will be fired. That's a lie. I can do this without the speed. Half the town won't be dead. Suit yourself, slow, sad shell man. See how you do without your spark. Okay. Well, it is the morning. The sun has come up. And I think I'll call it an episode. See you in the next one.